Hi, I'm Christine Lucas with Complete Mind and Body. I'm a holistic health and nutrition counselor. And what that means is I inspire and empower my clients to find more energy in their lives and balance through both food and lifestyle. So of course we begin with food and I teach them how to eat whole, real, nutritious, life and energy giving food. And then we move on to the life stuff. What inspires you? What feeds you on the deepest level? What brings you joy? What brings you happiness? How are you managing your stress? Are you moving? Do you have physical activity that's fun? Are you connected to something spiritual, something that's greater than yourselves? Do you have communication in your relationships? And are you enjoying your life to the fullest? Because really, if you think about it, that is what feeds us. And that's what drives us. And when we feel hunger, what do we do? We eat. And oftentimes it's not the food that we want to be eating or that's healthy for us or that makes us feel good. I ask my clients to look at their lives because when you can be fulfilled in your life, food almost becomes secondary. So we have a lot of fun with food and a lot of it is vegetarian based, but you don't have to be a vegetarian. I really like to meet you wherever you are and help to get you to the next level so that you can live the life that you deserve. Hello everybody. What a great night this is, isn't it? I'm like learning so much information and it's just great to see all the great, wonderful speakers. So um, my presentation is called Six Steps to Creating a Life You Love. Now wouldn't it be great if it were that easy? But I'm gonna show you how it is. But before I get to that, I wanna tell you who I am and what I'm doing here tonight. Um, my name is Christine Lucas and I'm a holistic health and nutrition counselor. And the name of my company is Complete Mind and Body. Now what I do as a holistic health and nutrition counselor is I help my clients to find more energy, we all could use some of that, huh? And balance in their lives through both food and lifestyle. So it's not just about the food that we put in our mouths. Of course we begin, I teach them how to integrate whole, healthy, real food into their lives in a way that's fun and simple and sustainable for a lifetime. But then we move on to something that feeds us on a deeper level. Can anybody guess what I'm talking about? What I'm talking about are elements such as finding a life that you love that inspires you. Physical activity that you get excited about going to do. It's not a chore having open communication in your relationships, a spiritual practice in which you connect to that's greater than yourself, and finding joy in your life. Because really, if you think about it, that's what feeds us on the deepest levels. That's what gives us what it, what it takes to make the choices that we make, whether we want to make a healthy choice or an unhealthy choice. We've all been there where we eat emotionally or when we're bored or when we're uninspired. Oftentimes we walk over to the refrigerator, we open it, nothing looks good. Have you had that before where you're like, ugh, what do I wanna eat? No, that doesn't look good. So then you go to the pantry, ugh. So you try something and, and it just doesn't do it. So you, well, how about some ice cream? Maybe that, and it makes you feel good for a moment, but then you sort of still feel this hunger. So it's important to me to help people discover what is it that they're hungry for? And that's the holistic approach. So tonight I'm not gonna give you information about nutrients and what fats and carbohydrates and proteins that you should be eating, but how you should be thinking or how it's the most empowered way to think. So that when you make those choices, you make them second, like with as just what a person who eats that way, the way that, a, that, would, that person would think. So six steps. Who here has ever heard of the law of attraction before? Hands, yeah. So what does the law of attraction state? Anyone? What was that? It's law of attraction. Law of attraction. Okay, so you mean attracting something that is like you, right? So the law of attraction states that which you, that which you focus upon is what you draw into your life. So whatever it is that you think about during your day, positive or negative, that's what you bring into your life. So if you think about all the things that you'd like or something that you really want, 
passionately and powerfully, emotionally, and you're connected to that and you think about it all the time, you're going to get that because that's something that you are focused on. Now think about it this way. If you emotionally and powerfully and passionately think about what you don't want, I am not, I do not want that in my life. Whatever happens, I do not want that. Guess what? The law of attraction states that that is what you're going to get. So imagine you're driving down a road. There's nothing, just fields. It's the middle of the winter. Every now and then you see a telephone pole on the side of the road, but they're pretty far spaced apart. You hit some ice. Your car goes out of control. What happens? Where does the car go? Hits that telephone pole, doesn't it? Every time. Why? Why does it hit that telephone pole? There's open fields everywhere. There was, there, there are, Telephones are 500 yards apart. Why did you hit that telephone pole? Because you're in the car going, don't hit the telephone pole, right? Ah, you're just so focused on the telephone pole. So that's where the car goes. Why not say the field when you lose control of the car? So this is the way our mind works. We are so powerful. So I'm going to share a technique with you this evening that I share with my clients in the very first session. Not the initial consultation, but the first session once they've started. And these are the six steps to creating a life you love. Now, before you get into the steps, you have to obviously think, well, that actually is the first step, so let's just go with it. You have to think about what it is that you want in your life and why you want that in your life. Are you thinking that you'd like to have some more energy, maybe fit into an old pair of pants, have your health? But why? Because your doctor said so, or because your blood, you know, when you get your blood work done, you want them to say, oh, that looks good this time. Why? That's not enough of a reason. But when you can get connected to, because you want to play with your grandchildren, you want to pick up your grandchildren and hold them and have the energy to run around with them, that's some powerful stuff. When you want to feel good because you want to still have the spark with your spouse, that is powerful. So you have to get connected to what it is that drives you. Why do you really want this? So you've got to spend some time thinking about it. Now, once you've thought about your goals and why it is that you want that in your life, the next step, and I've heard some people say this, is to write. OK. When you write out your goals, you get very clear. And part of attracting is being clear. That focus that you have when you're focused on the telephone pole is because you're clear that you don't want to hit it. Now, the way I like to write goals is in a way that's very empowering to you. So, OK, let's say you want to lose some weight. So if your goal is, oh, I'm going to lose weight. OK, well, that's a good goal, except for that it's that's so heavy. There's a negative attachment to it because you're feeling bad that you got this way in the first place, and oh, that means I have, and it just feels heavy. So what I encourage my clients to do is to write a goal that sounds more like this. I'm so happy and grateful. And keep it in the present tense, by the way. You have to keep the goals positive and present because the future never is here. We only have this moment, as someone said a few talks ago. We're only in the now. So live as if you are that way. Think as if a person who is that way thinks. Write it out. I'm so happy and grateful that I feel great in my pants, which fit loose. And this is fun, and it's easy. You want to put adjectives in there. Let's say you wanted to eat more vegetables. You know, as Mary said, we've got to eat more plant food. We all know we have to eat more plant food. So if you're like, oh, I have to eat more vegetables, that's not a good goal. Or I'm going to eat more vegetables. The going to never comes, because it's in the future. But how about, I'm so happy and grateful I get to eat vegetables that I love that make me feel wonderful and give me energy. It's a different way of thinking. It's a different way of looking at it. Um, OK, so after you've gotten clear with what your goals are and you think about what it is and you write it out, and I, you know, weight and, and vegetables, we talk a lot about that, but it can be anything in your life, anything. The next step is to speak. OK? So you want to speak. So 
So we're so programmed as soon as we have an idea that's different for us to have the negative self-talk come in. Oh yeah, you said that before. Sure, you're gonna eat more vegetables. Oh, how long have you been? What diets are you gonna do? So you end up listening to that. But when you speak your goal over and over again, I'm so happy and grateful that I look, feel great in my new pants and they're loose. I'm so happy and grateful that I enjoy eating vegetables that are fun, that I love to cook, that I love to make. Then eventually, that negative self-talk has to listen to that over and over again. So imagine that there's two of us inside. I always say this, and I love this, the way, the way of thinking. We have, I, I believe that we're spiritual beings having a human experience, not the other way around. So if you remember that we're spiritual beings having a human experience, what does your spirit want? Your spirit is the one who wrote those goals. Your spirit is the one who wants more energy. Your spirit is the one who wants to play with your grandchildren and your children. But your human side is the one who tells you, tells you, no, you try that. Mm. And this is why. The human is all of your experiences in life, all your failures, everybody who ever told you you can't, your disappointments. The human doesn't want to change. The human wants to stay very comfortable and safe. And the spirit, because we're spiritual beings, always wants to grow and evolve and experience life. So here's what happens. When you don't know the difference between who's speaking, your spirit or your human self, we, the human's going to win. The human always wins, and the spirit says, OK, fine. Kind of walks away with his tails between his legs. But when you speak over and over from the spirit and from your inner self, true or higher self, what you truly want in your life, to draw in your life, to enjoy vegetables, to have it be fun, to have it be easy. This is piece of cake. Ah, get it? <laughs> right, though? Treating like you treat a piece of cake. Oh, we all love cake. But when you change your mind, you change your thinking. I don't love cake, actually, I don't like, because I've told myself over and over and over again, I don't really like the texture, and yeah, it's sweet, but I don't like the way I feel. And so I'm so connected to that, that when it's presented in front of me, it doesn't look as beautiful. You can do the same thing with vegetables and with plant food and with healthy things for your body. In your mind, and you, you have to, it's almost like you have to lie to yourself at first. But by speaking it over and over and over again, the human side says, well, hang on a second. Maybe, maybe there's something to those vegetables. Maybe I should, right? And so then it becomes easy. Now that's the next step, is the believing part, OK? That's probably the trickiest part of all of the steps. Once you get to that space here, the belief, the rest is easy. The rest, it just comes. I'm so happy and grateful. I love to prepare delicious vegetables. I get to. I know how to. Look at this. I always tell my clients, approach it like arts and crafts. Food is arts and crafts. It's not a chore. If you tell yourself, oh, I got to make dinner, you're never going to be healthy because it's not, you're not going to want to. But if you can tell yourself, look what I get to make. Look what I get to share. It's a different state of mind. So you have to change your mind to change your health. It's the first thing. Think, write it out, speak over and over and over again. And then all of a sudden, wait a minute, I do believe that. Pizza doesn't taste that good, actually. It kind of gets gooey and it gives me a stomachache. And when I ate that salad, I felt amazing, right? So you believe it. And when you believe it, the next step, oh, that's a piece of cake. <laughs> I keep saying that, it's so funny. OK, act. So when you believe it, the actions are like getting up, brushing your teeth, making a green smoothie, having a nice healthy lunch, going through your day, the way that a person lives who does that. And guess what happens after you act? Anyone guess? Someone's going to guess? That's exactly the next step. You become. So look at that. All just because you changed the way you think. You can bang your head against the wall trying to reach your goals and being frustrated time and time again. Or you can just change the way you think about it. Positive, present tense. 
think, write, speak, believe, act, become. Okay? So I want to tell you a little bit about my journey and how I got to this point. Um, let's see, about 17 years ago when I was 23, I'm going to be 40 in three months, I was very heavy. I was overweight. I was tired. I wasn't living my life's purpose, that's for sure. Who is a 23, really? But I definitely wasn't. I was all over the place. And then one day, I had a car accident. And in the car accident, I injured my back. And it was a, you know, I was okay. I could walk, but I definitely had to go through some rehab. I had to go uh, do, I had some discs that were bulged. I had the whiplash, the whole thing. So after about three months of getting cared for, they said to me, well, your insurance is finished, um, so you know, if you do these stretches, you should be getting better gradually. But you're probably going to have to have surgery one day. And here I am, 23, and I'm like, what? Surgery? What do you? Well, is there any way around it? Is there any way out of it? And they're, no, not really. You might be able to have a few active years, but you're not going to be able to lead a very active life. Who wants to hear that at 23? What tomboy wants to hear that at 23, by the way? Can you believe that? So I said, well, wait a minute. I can't go horseback riding or skiing? And they were like, no, you do that stuff, definitely. You're never going to be able to do that again. And I said, oh, no, I, this is a death sentence for me. There's got to be a way around this. So I thought about it for a few days. And I went back and I said, what if I lost all this weight and I got fit? and I ate well, and I took care of myself, would that do it? Then would I have to get surgery? And he goes, well, that would be the only way, and that's not even guaranteed. So I lost 40 pounds. I spent the rest of my life educating myself on everything I could get my hands on with diet, physical activity, exercise, spirituality. I became a fitness model. I was determined to show them I'm not going to live with this death sentence because I change my thoughts. I go horseback riding every Friday. This is now, still. Um, so changing your thinking. You can believe what people tell you when they tell you you're sick, or you can decide for yourself, I'm not going to be. I'm going to take the steps that I need to make in order for me to live the way that my spirit wants to live, the way that I've always seen for myself. So after I lost the weight and I... I decided after about, I don't know, maybe another 10 years that I was going to get a formal education. So I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York City. And as I evolved with the education, I became interested in vegetarianism and veganism and raw foodism. Has anybody ever heard of raw foodism before? Yeah, so raw food, foodism is amazing. And it's not like we're sitting around eating carrots and celery and <laughs> gnawing on raw vegetables all day. But we're getting creative with it. I approach it like arts and crafts. So I got raw food chef certified, uh, health coaching certified. So the coaching, you see, is very different than a typical nutritionist that would tell you to count calories and watch what you eat and write a diary. I do that sometimes, but... Um, okay, and then the last thing that I wanted to say was we are out at the table there. If anybody wants to speak to me in person, if you've got any issues or questions that you don't necessarily want to put out in the audience, because I get it, this stuff feels private, and it is. Um, I'm happy to answer some questions, and we have fun classes, because I'm all about fun, because if you can't have fun taking care of yourself, really, what's the point? And I want to, it to be inspirational, and I want it to be something that you look forward to doing, not a chore and not work. So I teach food prep classes. I have a few classes coming up. Um, one is about dealing with sugar cravings. We're all so addicted to sugar and caffeine. And what is that about? And how do we deal with that? So that workshop is, really dives into where they come from and how to deal with that. Um, I, does anybody ever go to Shubies over there in Marblehead? Yeah, I love Shubies. So we're doing a raw food Mexican fiesta. I'll be teaching how to make corn tortillas from scratch. And uh, of course, meat, taco meat and sour cream, but it's not taco meat. You know what's funny? My fiance, he is a total, complete extreme from where I am with food. Um, it's a perfect yin and yang. But the other day, we watched a great movie, and he was inspired. And he said, you know, I'd like to eat, try to eat some raw food and try to not, like, jump for joy. And I was trying to keep my cool. OK, I can do that for you. I'm like, oh, so excited. So 
So I made him some tacos. I thought I have to try these tacos out a few times, make sure I've got them right for the class. And I gave it to him, and he says, first thing out of his mouth was, tastes like tacos. So if you know how to do things and you can get creative with it, you can make your healthy food taste great. And then the best part of that is, then you become that healthy person that you want to be. Thank you.